name is Marshall Atkinson, and here's my email address. It's marshall at inksoft.com, and here's the phone number to my office. Uh, also, uh, I encourage you to follow me on my own personal social media, because that's what this webinar is about, and that's at uh, Atkinson T-Shirt. So for Twitter, it's at Atkinson T-Shirt, and for Instagram, it's the same. For LinkedIn or Pinterest, it's just my name. And then uh, also you can follow Inksoft at, at Inksoft for Twitter and Inksoft for uh, Instagram. And we'd love for you guys to follow. We love everybody to follow each other because uh, you never know what some shop's doing you can learn from. So that's always a good practice as well. So let's get going. So today's objective is to understand the strategy, tactics, and best practices for creating relevant social media content from your production floor. So it's really about really recording and documenting what you guys do all day. You know, some of y'all are screen printers, some people do sublimation, some people do uh, embroidery, you know, what DTG, whatever you're doing, you know, you need to get that, um, get that information out to everyone so everybody can understand what you guys are all about. So here's what we're talking about today. Today we're going to discuss why this is important. We're going to talk about easy ways to create the content. We're going to talk about how to distribute the content. We're going to talk about how to create a social media marketing calendar because you want to kind of think about when you should be posting and what happens after you post. So you send off that great picture. So what happens after that? So why is social media marketing important? Why is taking pictures from your production floor important? Well, it's easy. Social media marketing creates the opportunity for customers to know, like, and trust you. All right, so here's why. First off, it's brand recognition. You're introducing your shop, you know, if you don't advertise, if you don't market, nobody knows who you are, what you do, why it's important. And I think it's really crucial that you get the word out on what you do all day. And um, a couple of years ago, I was talking with a customer and I lost a job to them. And it was metallic gold ink on a t-shirt. And the reason we didn't get the job is that they thought that we couldn't print with metallic gold ink, which to us, that's just ridiculous because it's just regular ink. But to them, we never demonstrated that we knew how to use gold ink or we even had it on our floor. So they went to another shop just because we didn't show them we could print with metallic gold ink. So that's why I think uh, creating this content and getting it out there is so crucial. So uh, another big facet is that it improves customer loyal loyalty. So it reminds them of you, you know, so maybe uh, you did something for them a couple months ago, or maybe they've got that golf tournament you handled for them last year. You know, if you're constantly pushing this content out, it keeps that, um, uh, brand awareness, it keeps them in your their brain. So when something happens and they need some, uh, some shirts, their first thought is of you because you're always there in front of them. So that's why you have to keep posting this stuff, okay? There's sales opportunities. So when you post a, uh, maybe you did a fake football jersey because it's the fall and we're doing jersey stuff, Hey, I want that too. I could use that for my school or my business. So it creates that need and that, that recognition of, hey, I want that type of stuff or I need hoodies, you know? So it's really important that, you, that you're timely with this stuff because it creates those sales opportunities for you, all right? And then another thing is it's a higher brand authority. It proves that you know what you're doing. OK, so if you and I've got some pictures later, I'm going to share. So when you prove that you can match a Pantone color, right, if somebody out there is using a shop that just failed at that, you just prove that you knew how to do it and you'll get a phone call. 
All right. So it's really important that you prove that you know what you're doing and documenting and sharing that content allows you to do that. And then the one of the best things is SEO rankings. OK, so why aren't you getting hits on your uh, uh, website is because when somebody Googles T-shirts, you're, you know, 15th or 20th in the list. One of the greatest ways to improve your SEO is by always updating your website. So when you're adding fresh content to a portfolio section or to a picture section, or you know when you've got your Pinterest board linked on your website, okay, what happens is these website bots, they see all this new activity and they will constantly give you a better ranking because you're updating your website all the time. If your website is just stagnant and sits there and it hasn't been touched and it looks like since 1986, and believe it or not, I've seen those websites, um, doing stuff like this really helps improve your search score. So that's probably one of the best reasons to do this type of stuff. So let's talk about easy ways to create this content. It's not that difficult. You just have to do it. So first off, just use your phone while you're walking around or working. This is something, you know, when I was running shops that I did all the time. I would have my phone in my pocket. Somebody's doing something cool or maybe some people are... Uh, working and it would look like a really cool shot just take out your phone and take a picture take out your phone and make a short video it's really not that difficult you just have to remember to do it okay so take pictures or videos and then what you want to do is you want to save and post them okay so what i did is i just created a Flickr account i would upload all the pictures i took um Every Friday, so you know, you take four or five days worth of pictures, you upload them on Friday, and then you share that on your Pinterest page or you upload it to your website or whatever you're doing. Just create that um, action, and then you're always doing it, and you'll have fresh content all the time because while you're working, you're taking this, you're taking the time to take a picture, okay? Um, another great idea is to use a template, okay? So you have a pre-formatted Photoshop file where you can drop in your photo and then you can make sure it's perfect by doing some editing, you know? Make sure the color's right. Make sure that it's, you know, 090, it, that it's not warped or whatever. And you can also edit out stuff that doesn't look great. OK, so you pre-format the file so it's exactly the right pixel dimension for whatever you're fixing to drop it into. And it just makes it easy. If you want to um, use your logo or your phone number or any other elements, you could already have this on a layer. OK, and that way when you drop your image in there, it already has all, all that created. And all you have to do is flatten it and save it as a PNG or whatever and then upload it to what you're doing. OK. You just rename the file and you post it on Instagram or you post it on Twitter or LinkedIn or your Facebook page or whatever you're doing. OK, so it's really an easy way to do that because you've set yourself up for success in advance. OK, that's using a template. The next uh, idea is to stage content creation based on orders coming in. OK, so for instance, it's the fall. OK, you know you want more hoodie jobs. So guess what you do is you fake it. You stage a hoodie order or you bring that hoodie job over to a press and you just set it up. Take a picture of it and then you post, hey, hoodies, here's what we're doing. Don't you need them? Here's our, you know, we got new uh, new ideas. You know, we've got a new hoodie, you know, with the uh, the drawstrings that light up or whatever. You can be staging this in advance for a sales opportunity. You don't have to wait for stuff to come in. You can set it up well in advance and know that you're trying to get this these type of orders just by taking the picture and then posting on social media, okay? So you schedule and arrange for uh, videos. There's a better chance of perfect because you're not being rushed. Okay, that's what that means. So let's talk about more content. And uh, so, more ideas. So another great thing is interesting decoration techniques. 
This could be applique. This could be, uh, you know, foam embroidery. This could be, maybe you've got a laser bridge. Maybe you're doing names and numbers on the back of uh, some jerseys. Maybe you're doing, you're printing over a hoodie zipper. Maybe you're printing an unusual location. So instead of a full front or full back, maybe you're printing just down on the hoodie pocket. Okay. Whatever it is, you could be taking pictures of this stuff and you put it on your Pinterest. You put it on your website uh, portfolio. And what this does is it gives people ideas for ordering from you because you're showing, hey, look at this cool idea. And uh, so that's a really a great, great thing to do. The next is what might attract other customers with similar orders? So if you really know that you're making more money doing uh, Nike polos or a hoodie or whatever, okay, start posting pictures with that stuff. And then customers might go, oh, you know what? I need some golf shirts for my business. Or, you know, it's the fall and I want to do a, um, I really like that uh, next level hoodie. And uh, I really like that uh, heathered, colored, colored heather uh, t-shirt. So this is one of these things where if you want to start selling more to customers with one type of garment, a great way of doing that is to post pictures of that particular garment. And then um, you don't necessarily have to say it's on sale. You, what you're just doing is saying these are ideas. Okay. So that might attract a customers to you because you're doing stuff for people. Okay. You want to show how you solve problems. Okay, how do you do embroider that logo over the center seam of a five panel baseball hat without it looking weird? You know, how do you do embroidery with tiny little type? How do you print over that hoodie zipper? How do you print over polyester performance stuff and not have dye migration? These are super common problems that lots of people struggle with. You know, are you doing an order with uh, lots of drop ships. Maybe you're doing a hundred drop ships for a company and they're going all over the United States. Take pictures of you putting the shirts in a box and have all the boxes lined up. Those, that's a hugely powerful picture. Do you do big orders? Take a picture of the shirts stacked up on the carts or the two or three pallets that UPS is fixing to ship for you or whatever. Okay. So it's like one of these things where you're showing you showing your customers how you solve your problems that lets them know that you can tackle that type of job. OK, same thing with complicated orders. You know, maybe you've got an order where it's got four or five different name drops in it or you've got you're running a job with 36 screens in it because it's front, back, both sleeves and a neck label or something. OK, so show all those screens that you're doing for the job or you're doing a music festival order where you're keeping all of the screens saved so people can order as every day progresses on the music festival for you replenishing the store. So when you show how you handle this complicated stuff, it gives people the idea that you can, that you can tackle that type of job. Okay. Show your process. Here's how we put an order in. Here's how we, uh, check things in and receiving to make sure that everything is correct. Here's our art department uh, uh, doing something, handling a simulated process thing. We're, we do our own embroidery digitizing. Here's how we do it. You can show how that punch is. Um, you know, how you set up, how you hoop, how you print. You know, you're, you're not giving away trade secrets to other decorators because everybody kind of knows all this stuff. What you're doing is you're showing your process to your customers so they kind of understand what's behind the curtain. Everybody that's listening has given a shop tour, I'm sure. OK, and people always marvel at how we do stuff. It's the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain thing. Let me tell you, that's super powerful to show how you do stuff. That's why it's fun to like get that restaurant uh, kitchen tour when we when we visit someplace because it shows, hey, how do they actually cook? You know, how do we actually do what we do? Showing that process is really super important. Uh, do close ups to show quality. You know, how do uh, 
how is our registration? How do we print on a black shirt? How do you do all that stuff that you do? When you do close-ups and you show that quality, okay, you're giving people the assurance that you know what you're doing, okay? So if you've never posted that picture before, nobody knows what, what you're capable of. So if you're constantly show that you can match a Pantone color on black, that you can print on a red performance tee and the white stays white, that you know how to print on some the neck uh, the waistband on a yoga pant or whatever, you're actually showing that you can do it, that you know what you're capable of, that you can remember all the different things that you got to do, and people will flock to you for this stuff. Um, also consider your audience. What do you think they would like to see? You know, a great way to figure that out is when you start posting content. Keep a record of how many people like, share, retweet, have a comment, whatever. So if everybody's always commenting on your artwork, post more pictures of your artwork. If everybody's always commenting on how you how your process is or smiling employees or, you know, maybe you take pictures of people picking up their job and they hold up a T-shirt with a smiling face, okay, that might get a lot of interaction. Guess what? You should do more of that type of stuff. So consider your audience when you're doing this and just keep a simple record of how many likes and retweets and stuff that you get. Okay? Show your happy customers. I just talked about that. And then pics of happy employees working. Okay? People like doing business with people that are happy, that are, you know, that we, when we show our employees working, they're smiling, they're doing stuff, that really is uh, resonates a lot because people want to know that their job is being taken care of and, oh, look at these, look at these people working. And uh, I think that's really cool. And then don't forget the shop dog. Yeah, I th kind of threw that in as a joke, but a lot of people have shop dogs and then people really kind of relate to that kind of thing. So if you've got one of those, you know, what is Buster doing today? You know, is he helping out in the shop? Is he, uh, whatever he's doing, show pictures of that dog doing stuff and be interacting and things. And there's a couple shops out there I can think of that show their dog all the time. And the dog actually is more popular than any employee they have. And it's a great marketing tool. I know a shop that has a VW delivery van, one of those old vans that they've branded and then they drive around, they take pictures of their van delivering jobs to people and that's what they post on social media. Okay, so that's kind of the same as a shop dog. So, you know, what what resonates with your brand, you want to show that. Okay, so here's some pictures. And these are all taken at Visual Impressions in Milwaukee um, and they're awesome. So uh, that's where I used to work. And so here's me raising a flag one morning and uh, so this type of stuff gets lots of comments, especially with the patriotism type of thing that goes on. So when you show just people working and how your day starts, people really like that stuff. So this is a picture I took of myself <laughs> raising the flag one morning and uh, it got a lot of comments. So uh, that's why I wanted to include it here. Uh, taking pictures of cones of thread. So. This, is, this seems kind of boring to some people, but for customers, they don't understand what embroidery thread looks like. Here's what a cone of thread is. And, uh, oh, you've got purple, you know? So it's like one of these things where you show this stuff, it really helps out. Here's what an embroidery machine looks like, you know? So people don't know. And when you show this stuff, they go, what is that blue thing? And then you can have that whole conversation about how you hoop and what that means and how it induces quality and all that kind of stuff. And so it really helps to show the process. Okay. Uh, here's a picture I posted on Instagram. And let me tell you, I got three clients from this one picture. Okay. Because what they were amazed at is the digitizing inside of the flower. Okay. So nobody stops and thinks about this type of detail and when you do stuff like this and when you pull it off people respond to it and they go hey i like that looks really great i would like that for my order 
okay? So it's like one of these things where when you don't post stuff like this, you won't get stuff, you won't get that reaction. So it's important to keep posting jobs like this. Here's another one. Hey, I didn't know that you could do sports stuff, you know? So it's important to post things. Here is a picture of a uh, variegated thread, which is the thread that uh, is multicolor in the same strand. So when you sew it on something, it has this really cool effect on the star, okay? So posting stuff like that gives people ideas about what you do, okay? Uh, here's a hat showing just how we're sewing it on a hat press. People want to know how you do things. Here's a picture of me with uh, Greg and Rob from Mind's Eye Graphics. You might know them. This is on the visual impressions floor, okay? So when people do shop tours, take a picture of them and post it on social media and you'll get a lot of response from it. Packaging up a job, okay? So here's a box of shirts with something going in the box and we're fixing to seal it up, okay? This shows how we're doing things. Uh, maybe you do poly bagging, okay? So on at Visual, you know, I source poly bags with the size label on the bag so we wouldn't have to put stickers on all the shirts. This saves money. This saves a step. This saves the client money. It gets jobs out faster. So we're able to talk about that because I show a picture with a size small S on the poly bag. And so that got lots of engagement with people when we do big programs and they recognize, hey, that's, that's really cool. I want you to do my job like that. Matching a Pantone color, okay? So here's a black shirt with a light blue-gray color, 2706, and uh, it's matched perfectly. Here's a blue, 310, matched perfectly. This shows that you know what you're doing. Here's close-up detail on some registration on a light blue shirt. Here's a DTG job. So this shows the detail, no half tones. This really helps you sell that type of DTG work when you're posting detailed pictures of stuff. Here's what your job could look like. Here's another DTG job. So here's DTG on a Heather Gray. This is multicolor on like 10 or 12 shirts, okay? Printing this type of job would be expensive. Doing it on a DTG is pretty cheap. So here's how just instead of detail jobs with, you know, like a photograph or a piece of art, here's just flat color. It's distressed from the, you know, the artwork. Here's how you do it on, on a gray shirt. You know, this gets you work. Showing pictures of your equipment is great. Here's uh, here's what a, a clean press should look like. Hopefully, all of your equipment is this clean. Here's how we load a shirt. This is how we run jobs. This is this is uh, Tony here pulling the uh, pulling the shirt back, and so it's straight. Here's a picture of metallic silver ink. Just stuff like this lets people know. Guess what? We can print with metallic silver ink. Here's a close-up of base down white, so it's translucent on a heather blue shirt. Okay, so this is for, um, you know, this was for Popeyes. So this is one of these things where it really shows how you do stuff and uh, what's really kind of cool about it. And you can sell based off of this. Here's what distressed art looks like. This is just a one-hit white distressed on a charcoal gray tee. Here's what metallic foil looks like. And uh, so people can kind of see what they can do with you when you show stuff like this. Here's printing on some yoga pants. Here's some shirts ready to ship for a client. Here's printing over a hoodie seam. Here's doing a transfer on a uh, metallic tote bag. So we printed the transfer and then transferred it onto the bag with a heat press over this pocket. Here's doing foil. Here's how it works. You print the ink, you put the foil down, then you heat press it, then you rub it into place. Here's sewing uh, a tag by the bottom of the shirt. Here's a whole bunch of shirts going out. So anyway, those were all different ideas of just stuff around the shop.
This is just me walking around, taking a picture, and that would post the comment, uh, po post the content. So what do we do after we've got the content? We want to post on social media channels on a regular basis. Okay, this doesn't mean three times a year. Okay, I've been to some shop social media stuff, and you guys hardly ever post. If you want good interaction, if you want to get lots of followers, if you want to have lots of engagement, you have to be consistent in what you're doing. So you're always posting, you're always showing your stuff, you're uh, really doing a good job with that. That's going to drive more interaction. That's going to drive more engagement on social media more than anything else is just being consistent. Okay. You want to go where your customers engage. Okay. So if you do a lot of B2B work, okay, Facebook might not be the right platform for you because your customers might be more on LinkedIn or might be more on Instagram. So do the deep dive and find out what platforms your customers or your potential customers are using, and then that's where you should be. So if everybody, you know, if you do stuff for high schools and everybody's on Snapchat, you should be on Snapchat. If everybody's on Facebook, you should be on Facebook, okay? Don't waste your time where they're not. You want to go where they are. So the, the old adage you want you to learn is, you know, you hunt where the deer live. You know, if you're a deer hunter, you don't go hunting in the parking lot. You got to go out in the woods, right? So you got to go find out where they are. You got to uh, put your deer stand where you want to have it. That's the same thing with finding customers, okay? Finding customers on social media, find out where they are, and then that's where you're engaging and that's what you're doing, okay? So it's like a game. It takes strategy. And here's the other thing I want you to learn is... It is constant, but you're going to fail. You're going to do, uh, you're going to post stuff that nobody looks at, that nobody likes, and nobody clicks on. It's okay. That's how you're going to learn how to do it. You know, you might have great content, but you posted it on the wrong channel. Or great content, and you're on the right channel, but you posted it at the wrong time. you got to kind of mess around a little bit. You know, when I was... Uh, a long time ago trying to figure this out I kept a spreadsheet where uh, you know engagements and times and posts and I kind of filtered stuff to figure out what was a good time when should I do it what channels all that kind of stuff and you learn how to do things that way by failing a lot okay so don't get discouraged you just got to get in there and do it and learn how to learn how to uh, manipulate your stuff, learn how to push your content, and um, you'll be a success, okay? So if you post on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, use fun headlines, use a hashtag, okay? If you don't know what a hashtag is, it's the pound sign, okay? It looks like the tic-tac-doe symbol, okay? And then you, as a hashtag, Use a, your shop name or some type of, if you're doing an event for Halloween or whatever, you know, hashtag fun saying, okay? And then what happens is people will search based on a hashtag, okay? And that's how you drive more engagement because you, there's lots of people posting on the hashtag. So if you're doing stuff for a school or you're doing stuff for a business or maybe for your city or Florida, Florida, <clears throat> or you're doing something for the hurricane, use the hashtag and everybody will be looking at, 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 at that. That's how it works. Sorry. Um, post on LinkedIn for B2B. Use groups, okay? One of the secrets to LinkedIn is in the groups and posting about once a week or once every two weeks, answering a question, asking a question, or posting something, okay? You can post your blog article, you can post a link to your Pinterest page, you can say, hey, follow me on whatever, or hey, we're doing this event. So it's really important that you use LinkedIn, you know, but just because that if your customers are there, but if they are there, doing stuff in groups is really great because it allows you to get more searches and also people are using those groups you know, there might be five or 6,000 people in that group. They're not always in that group looking at stuff. But what happens is about once a month or so, they'll go and they'll see 
hey, is there anything interesting here? Oh, there's a cool article. I'll click on that. So if you're putting that in there, you're in a, at an advantage to everybody else. Post on the Pinterest page. If you don't know what Pinterest is, it's kind of like a big bulletin board kind of thing. And you can create boards within your account for like screen printing or embroidery or shop employees or fun stuff or maybe there's an idea board or whatever you're doing, you can do different boards and then you can uh, post stuff in there from other people you pin to that board, but you can also upload your own material to your boards and other people will like or share it, okay? And it's a great way to do, uh, get images out there, have people understand what you do and then it's all kind of, if you segregate it by the idea, if they're interested in embroidery, there might be three or 400 embroidery ideas in there. And it's a great way to search. You can include links in there to your order form page or to your website or whatever you want to do. It's a great way to drive that engagement. Post on your website gallery at least once a week upload three or four or five, 10 pictures or whatever. Okay, even if you just do one, Okay, if you just did one a week, you know, that's 52 pictures a year you're putting up there. That's better than zero. Okay, so it's really important that you guys are putting stuff up there because that helps your SEO. You know, when I talk to shop owners, they're always complaining about how they don't get any web traffic. And when you go to their website and there isn't a whole lot there to look at. Well, that's why there's there. Why would I go there? There's nothing there. So putting relevant content in there. And then what you can do is. You can use other social media platforms like Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and say, hey, did you check out our gallery? We just posted new pics. And what that does is that drives people to your website. But you got to have the content there. OK, so let's talk about making a marketing calendar. It's not that difficult. Uh, first off is think about your audience. Who are they? What times do they look at? You know, so if you're let's say you're Facebook, right? Are they at 10 o'clock in the morning on Facebook or are they going to be after work? So when should you be posting? You should be posting when they're using the media. OK, research what works or is interesting. Use trial and error. OK, I kind of went over that earlier, but it's just really uh, you don't have to think and create the idea because tons of people are already doing really cool stuff. It's 100% okay to take somebody else's idea for social media content and then take a picture of what you do in your shop and post just like they're doing, okay? You're, nobody's going to give you a mark by your name if you take somebody else's idea and make it your own. I know sometimes I'm talking about stealing people's art. That's different. Stealing ideas for how to create content on social media is a great tool to really kind of flatten the learning curve and get more ideas going, okay? Uh, I know a lot of people use a whiteboard and just kind of brainstorm and they're always putting ideas down. This is a great way to kind of understand what's going on and think about what might work for you just by seeing what other shops are doing or uh, other people in the community. Audit your content. Yes, it's 100% okay to repost or repeat your content again, okay? Especially on stuff like Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever because people are only looking when they're on there, okay? So if I posted something yesterday, today, it's almost valueless, okay? So if you post it again, it's fine. Just keep posting it, okay? And uh, there's all type of uh, theories and guides out there. You just Google up how often should I post. You're going to read 16 different ways and different theories about when and where and what. Okay. But at the end of the day, it only matters as to what works for you. Okay. So if you've got content that is getting some traction, that people are reading it or people are looking at your picture or uh, watching your video. Okay. It's 100% okay to repost it again, okay? So don't think you have to keep inventing everything over and over and over again. Just create it once and then repost it once a month. Or when you do stuff for the holidays, you can use that same stuff next year, okay? So when you're creating the content, just don't put the year on it. And that way, next Christmas or next Halloween or next 4th of July, you can use that same picture, okay? Because why? 
you're going to have more people that have followed you that didn't see it last year. So it's going to be new to them. It's 100% fine. Okay, create a major events list. So you're building your posts around these. So what's going on right now, you know, so it's the fall. It's when we're recording this webinar. Um, so what's going on? We've got f f the leaves are changing. You've got Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up. You've got uh, other times of the year. It's 4th of July or Labor Day or it's football or baseball season or whatever. Okay. What are you doing two and three months before that to create your posts so you're pushing content out so by the time it's the right season, you've already done all the work, you've put it into your calendar, it's already created, and it just has to drop, okay? If you're ahead of the game, all of this stuff is already done. The biggest problem shops have with social media is there never is enough time. I hear that all the time. Well, I wish I could do that, but I don't have enough time. You do have time, okay? It's just not important enough for you to spend time on it. OK, so maybe you personally might not have time, but is there anybody in your entire building that can do this? You need to spend some time, teach them what you want, talk about it, create this list, create the content, do it way in advance. This is part of their job. And then guess what? You can get this stuff out when you need it. And it isn't um, all last minute and looks hacked together. OK. I like using the 80-20 rule, okay? If you don't know what this is, it's basically 80% of your content that just for social media in general should be about other things, right? Because if you're always me, 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 people don't follow you. They don't listen to what you say. So what you really want to do is about 80% of the time, share, retweet, repost, like, whatever, other people's content. Maybe this is an industry article. Maybe this is something that's going on in your community. Maybe this is your customer's stuff, which is awesome. If you're, if you're reposting what your customers are saying, they love you. Okay. So participating 80% of your content is somebody else's stuff. 20% is yours. Okay. So if you're, you're the guy that only posts Hey, we're having a sale. Hey, we're having a sale. Hey, look at this. Hey, look at that. People start tuning you out. So if you want more engagement with the pictures that you're posting, don't always just post the same thing. Post other content and you'll have more engagement when you do stuff for your shop. Okay, this is really important. And then let's talk about the 99-1 rule. Okay, this is something I bumped into uh, I don't know, four or five, six years ago, uh, somebody, I was at a networking event in Chicago and I was just sitting there having a beer with somebody and they laid this on me and I'm like, this is genius. Okay. So the 99 one rule, okay, is that, is this 90% of the time, whatever you push out there, most people will be reading it. Okay. They're going to read that comment. They're going to see that picture. They're going to know that you did something. Okay. Only 9% of the time will people like or comment or retweet or share or do something with it. Okay. So there's a lot of invisibleness going on. There's a lot of people that see this stuff and they don't ever do anything with it. And you think nobody's looking, but they are. Okay. 9% of the time they're going to like it. Okay. Here's the one, 1% 1 of the people create the content. So only 1% of the people out there are taking pictures of their shop floor or filming them printing those hoodies or embroidering those baseball hats or whatever. Okay. Only 1% of the people are doing that. Okay. So guess what? If you're in the 1%, 90% of the people out there are seeing your stuff. You're so much better than everybody else if you're in that 1%, which is why you need to be in the 1% because you're going to kick everybody's butt because nobody else is doing this. So just think around you. Look at the shops in your area, okay? Go and look at their social media. I guarantee you 
they've got a uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. They've got those accounts and they haven't updated it since June or worse yet, since 2015, okay? When you start creating this content, you're kicking their butt. You need to be doing this, okay? Be that 1%. Use tools and make it easy, okay? Hootsuite or Buffer are really great, easy to use platforms for doing stuff in advance. I personally like Buffer. I know tons of people like Hootsuite. It doesn't really matter. They work the same, okay? I use Buffer, okay? If you follow me on social media, you see I'm always sending content out, okay? Here's the secret. It's all scheduled in advance. Everything that I've done, everything that's coming out today was probably scheduled two or three weeks ago. You know, currently my Buffer account has posts that are going out about four weeks, right? Four weeks from now is already scheduled. It's already out, okay? How do I do that? On Sundays, when I'm sitting around in the morning drinking coffee, I add content to my Buffer account, okay? It's got it pushed out. And then I also re-share things that have happened before. And then what I also do is when I'm developing new content, I drop it in on the days and times that I want it to come out. And then guess what? I don't have to worry about it. So I spend maybe an hour a week, you know, or so on my social media and then it's handled. Okay. I like doing it Sunday mornings. It's kind of my routine when I'm sitting around in my underwear drinking coffee. That's what I'm doing is I'm putting stuff into my buffer account. Sorry for that visual. But that's what's going on and that's why I, it looks like I'm always working. You know, when I talk to people, they go, man, you post all the time. It's like, well, I use a tool. You know, so it's like you can use a handsaw to cut a piece of wood or you can use a chainsaw. OK, Hootsuite and Buffer are chainsaws for social media. They make it easy. OK, you can get an account for free. You know, I use a paid account for Buffer, but you can get one for free. You can get up to 10 posts for free. So you schedule your posts out. You know, I like doing things way in advance. So I I pay the money every year. It's not a big deal. So that makes it easy, okay? Use a calendar reminder, set your activity as an appointment, okay? So you need to post every Friday to your website or to Flickr or to Pinterest or whatever you're doing, set an appointment just like you would if a customer came in or you gotta go see the dentist, set it as an appointment so you do it every Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever you're going to do. And that way you'll do it. Okay. So uh, the reason why a lot of people don't do stuff is they forget. Okay. If it's important to you, you won't forget. Put it on a calendar, make it important, make it a big thing with three gold stars on your to-do list. So you do it or delegate it to somebody else and have them do the same thing. You know, so using a calendar really helps you. Okay. I have a calendar uh, for my content that I do, and I'm always thinking about the blog articles or whatever, this webinar, for example. You know, this was all scheduled way in advance, and I created the content way in advance, and that way when it came time to do it, it's just done. Calendars are great. Use them. Okay. So what's next? So you create this stuff, you post it. What happens after that? So let's talk about that. Okay. So after you posted your awesomeness, what's the next step, okay? Social media is social. You can't just let it lay there, okay? So what you need to do is when somebody likes or retweets or shares, publicly thank them or respond. A great thing to do is to, uh, there's always a private message or direct message thing. <clears throat> so when somebody likes something, you can uh, thank them and then uh, you'll drive that engagement. Hey, let me know if I can help you. A couple of those people go, yeah, I got this thing coming up. I need a quote. That actually happens. It doesn't happen if you don't thank them. It doesn't happen if you don't do it in, um, in the private message stuff, okay? The next thing is to follow people back, okay? Follow other people that are relevant, okay? So when somebody follows your shop, are you following them back? Okay. So when I look at people's 
accounts that only have 60, they only have 60 followers. They only have 100 followers on Facebook. They've got six followers on Instagram. And you look and you compare who's following them and who that shop is following, you can see that they're not following the people back. If you want to grow your follow list to have huge numbers, you have to follow people and you have to follow people back because other because people will unfollow you if you don't follow them. OK, that's really super important. OK, and the other thing here is to follow other people that are relevant. OK, and who's relevant to you? It's going to be your customers. It's going to be your vendors. It's going to be people who can influence others by what you do. OK, so if somebody likes, shares, comments, retweets something that you're putting out you should immediately follow that person, okay? You're saying, hey, thank you. You've publicly thanked them, but now follow them. And guess what? If they don't follow you, hopefully they'll follow you back, okay? That's how you build your uh, your group. That's how you build things, okay? And um, so it's like one of these things, social media is all about being social, okay? So use private or direct messaging, engage. I, I, I just talked about that. It's really super important. Um, so a great way of doing that is if somebody just followed you, you could have a pre-written canned thing that you just copy and paste. There's also lots of tools that you can use. If somebody follows you, it automatically sends them the message. Um, I've tried those before, and I, I don't like that so much. Uh, that's just my personal thing. I've done it a couple times with different platforms. I like being personal and doing it myself. I seem to have better engagement and follow when I do that. Okay. Follow up with sales or customer service teams. Okay. So when you have um, something going on, your sales and customer service should be also engaging. Okay. It can't just be whoever's posting the thing. So if somebody likes something you're doing, okay, go ahead and have sales reach out to them. If it's your customer, have the customer service rep that that's in their account follow up okay that really drives that engagement it can't just be just one person what happens if three people from your company follow up with the same guy you know so you might get lots of engagement from that share reposts that get engagement after a bit and keep sharing them okay this is super important so if you posted uh, i don't know a picture of the of that hoodie the print over the zipper which a lot of shops can't do OK, and you're getting a lot of engagement on it. Two weeks later, share it again. It's OK. And keep sharing it. Keep sharing it. OK, you'll eventually see that the engagement dies off. But you know what? Six months from now, share it again. OK, one of the great things about Hootsuite and Buffer is that you can um, filter by top posts, posts that were liked, posts that were uh you know, engaged or whatever. So it's like one of these things that you can uh, find out very easily what were your top posts and then just reshare it. OK, so here's some things to remember before we conclude. And I'll take your questions in a minute and I see a whole bunch of them in there. All right. So remember, here are the top takeaways. Fresh content equals better SEO. OK, so the more that you're posting, the better your Google rank is going to be. OK, bar none. That's a really a great reason why to do this kind of stuff. And it, it makes it a worthwhile investment when you're always sharing, okay? Use your phone or other creative tools to create constantly. You don't need a lot of fancy gear. You've already got a phone in your pocket, okay? Just take it out, take a picture, and then upload it once a week. It's not that difficult, okay? Be brave, post, and learn. One of the biggest problems I think a lot of people have is they're just scared of making a mistake. I'm scared of what will people say. So it's like one of these things where you think you really need to do stuff, um, but you, you don't want to because you don't know what people are going to think. Be brave enough and just post it and not worry about it. OK, learn from your mistakes. It's OK. All right. Post on rel relevant channels consistently. So if your customers are engaging on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or whatever, do it all the time, okay? And just keep going and keep going and keep going and don't let it stop, okay? Do more than talk about you. 
80-20 rule, okay? Use a calendar and plan. You wanna create early, okay? You don't wanna wait uh, until the last minute to do stuff because you'll never get around to it. Something will come up, you gotta order to get out, and then it's after the event and you it's the forehead slap and you'll wonder what happened, okay? Use a calendar, you, you can look ahead, you know what to do, okay? Engage publicly and privately, okay? And then the last thing is follow up, okay? Your social media should be about sales, okay? You should be following up, you know? Uh, I get messages all the time on the back channels of my social media accounts, and I'm always sending stuff to sales, I'm always following up, uh, sharing some information or whatever. That's what happens. That's where the magic is, is in the follow-up. You can't just be posting and hopefully something happens. Following up is the key, okay? So let's look at some questions and uh, take some. And um, while we're doing that, here's my info, uh, marshall at inksoft.com. And here's my phone number if you want to call. So let's look at some questions real quick. Uh, looks like we got a gazillion. <laughs> so uh, let me uh, go through here. Uh, uh, just curious if there's going to be a replay of the webinar. Yes, um, we will be posting this on the YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, which is another thing that you could be doing on YouTube, uh, probably in a day or so. Uh, we have to make sure the sound and the picture is great and we do some just little editing and stuff, and then we'll be sending it off. If you follow me on social media or Inksoft on social media, uh, we'll be sending off, uh, hey, it's available, here's the link. Okay, so just look for that. Um, on Twitter, we're at at Inksoft, and uh, also on Instagram, it's Inksoft, and then for me personally, it's uh, at Atkinson T-shirt without a hyphen for Twitter, and also the same for Instagram. And then um, you can follow me under my name, Marshall Atkinson, for um, uh, LinkedIn or uh, Pinterest. All right, so uh, next question is, uh, supplier name for poly bags with sizing printed on them. Um, that's uh, a company I used when I lived up in Wisconsin. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember who they are, but I'm connected with them. So if you would email me at marshall at inksoft.com, I'll happily look that up and send you the guy's information. Okay, so that's marshall at inksoft.com. Just send me a, um, a question. Hey, I need the poly bag with the sizes on it, and I'll shoot that over to you. Um, we would love to take pictures of our work, but are concerned about copyright trademark issues. Do you get a release signed by your customers to use their logos and pictures on social media? Okay, that's a great question. If you think your customer is gonna really go crazy about it, absolutely get a release. Let them know what you're doing. Um, uh, if another great thing to do is to do just a close up of it so you can't tell what it is. It's the letter A. What is that? Who knows? Nobody's going to know, okay? Because what you want to show is, for example, if you remember the picture I showed had the gold foil on the navy shirt, okay? Uh, I posted that. That actually was for who? Could you tell? Maybe. It was for McDonald's, but you can't tell, you know? So it's like one of these things where uh, you can avoid that just by doing a close-up, not showing a logo, uh, that type of stuff. Um, so it's like one of these things, if you're scared about it, absolutely follow your gut, okay? Or you can just do something where it's just taking a, a picture where you really can't tell what's going on, but you can tell that you're printing on a hoodie or you're embroidering a hat, that type of stuff. So uh, be careful about what you're doing. Uh, if you want to, anytime you think you're going to get in a problem, uh, be honest with your customer and go, hey, we'd like to do this. This helps us out. Do you have a problem with it? Most people will say no. Um, okay, uh, can Inksoft websites have a portfolio? Uh, to my knowledge, we don't have that. That would be a really great idea though, and I'll make sure that our development team knows that. Uh, and um, it's just, uh, 
uh, we, we take those things seriously. Uh, most people, though, uh, use Inksoft as an add-on to their existing website, and they just use their API and stuff. So uh, I'm going to write that down. Uh, website portfolio. And, um, but that's a great idea. All right. So um, uh, let's see what else. Okay. So here's one on... Uh, Twitter. Okay. So how often should you post to Twitter? Uh, you should post to Twitter all the time. You know, some people post uh, 15, 20 times a day. I think that's a lot. <laughs> I personally post three times a day. And that's what seems to work for me is basically the breakfast, lunch, and dinner rule is uh, you want to get people before they start work around lunchtime and then after work. And uh, so when you post what times or what time zone or whatever, that's really kind of up for you to decide and what your level of engagement for your customers is. Uh, I would play around with that and just kind of just see what are the best times for you. Sometimes you mix it up. Um, you both Hootsuite and Buffer have a really great tool where you can adjust your times whenever you want, post stuff and do that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a really cool uh, way of uh, adjusting things. So you might want to look into that. Okay, uh, what else we got? And where are we on time? Okay, I got like a minute. So this is going to be the last question. Um, what about uh, pay-per-click? Okay, uh, pay-per-click is great if you're trying to get out a message or a sale or, you know, an event type of thing. Pay-per-click is something I would look into. Uh, but it's one of these things that you can really, uh, if you don't have it dialed in right, uh, can really kind of lose your butt on. So I would make sure that if you're going to use pay-per-click, you've got a really good idea about who you're trying to reach, what your market demographic is. There are certainly uh, some really great tutorials and uh, articles out there. I would just Google it up, and uh, and also depends on what channel you're using. Also, there's a big difference between Twitter pay per click, Facebook pay per click, you know that type of stuff. So I would really kind of understand first where you're coming from, what you're doing, and then um, what you need to be doing, and just kind of make a plan and and just try it with a very limited, small sample. Where say, hey, I'm only going to spend 50 bucks. Let's see how it goes and you've got it dialed in, did you get an engagement or not? If you didn't, it's only 50 bucks, okay? So just kind of know uh, in advance what your goals are and try to write your plan and just see if it happens. And then if it really starts working, then you can pump some more money into it. All right, so hopefully that uh, answers all your questions. And